Hi, I'm Hadia, and I will be presenting our work on comparing machine learning techniques for blood glucose forecasting using free living and patient generated data. So, the main problem set up in our work uh, was that given the historical glucose data of people with type 1 diabetes, we want to develop a model that is able to estimate their future glucose levels across a certain prediction horizon. Um, in our work, we use an R of past glucose data to uh, predict glucose levels 30 minutes in the future. One example of a real-world application of this work can be artificial pancreas system in which people can use these future glucose estimates to automate their insulin delivery and manage their diabetes more effectively. So in order to uh, train a forecasting model, we used two data sets. One of them is called OpenAPS, which is a large patient-generated data. Um, it is collected from more than 150 individuals with type 1 diabetes over a period of four years, and it is uh, noisy and heterogeneous. In order to compare it with the benchmark data set, we used Ohio T1DM, which is a clinical and pre learning data set, and it is relatively cleaner uh, than OpenAPS. So we tried to answer five main questions with the help of our experiments. The first one was... Uh, a comparison between univariate and multivariate setting. We wanted to investigate the effect of adding additional information like meals and insulin uh, and see how it affects the forecast accuracy. The second was um, comparing single step and multi output forecasting for deep learning models. A single step model predicts only a single value in the prediction horizon, whereas a multi output forecasting model can estimate all the values in the prediction horizon simultaneously. Thirdly, as I said earlier, we used OpenAPS, a large data set, and um, a smaller data set called Ohio TVDM to see how the quality and size of data affects the uh, performance of the models. And finally, we used a bunch of machine learning models to see which, of, which one of them was the most suitable for this application. Now, the results show that the baseline models were not able to perform as well as deep learning models. Um, the model that performed the worst was autoregressive moving average with a root mean square error of 26 on Ohio data set and 21 on OpenAPS. And the best model was LSTM with single step configuration and univariate time series with uh, an error of 21 on Ohio and 14 on OpenAPS. Overall, uh, we show that blood glucose forecasting is a problem that should be studied in the context of different size and quality of data output settings and modality uh, of input data. I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Kleinberg, and my lab mates, um, and thank you for listening to my talk.